uh, in history, and George H.W. Bush did it, uh, and you see it's in the second row behind the presidents, uh, men who wanted to be president, uh, and one who wants to be president, in the case of Mike Pence, uh, and uh, they should read the history of George H.W. Bush, because well, it's not an easy thing to pull off. And, and the uh, history itself, I think it's really important to have, that it reflects how the people in the administration actually remembered their time. They thought of it as a very successful administration. There's really no modern presidential administration uh, at all. But that, but sorry, let's just listen to this at home. There's really no modern presidential administration from start from Lyndon Johnson until today that has been so open with its history, that has been so eager to tell its story, that has been so excited to have its records revealed. Not Nixon, obviously, not Ford, not Reagan. Nobody has been so good, if you will, about saying, we want to tell our tale because we are very proud of what we did. And it really reflects in how they provide access to people who want to learn that history. Isn't it also just so pretty to watch the pageantry of these events? You know, George Herbert Walker Bush was president at a time when the public could actually drive along Pennsylvania Avenue in front of the White House until the Oklahoma City bombing made that close to only pedestrian traffic. But you know, you watch this and you think about uh, inauguration of presidents and when they will march in the parade, often on foot in front of the White House, as uh, President Bush 41 did, and his of course, predecessors and successors, and then this note of finality. And then they return home to just be a citizen. Right. Again, and no longer, and no longer uh, a president. You know, seeing this, this picture of the president and, and hearing George W. Bush talk earlier about his father reaching over and grabbing his hand, uh, there's a phrase that's common used, used about the president, which is master of a small gesture. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see a lot of small gestures. The ones I've already noticed, uh, just last night, or the night before at the, at the Capitol, having the, uh, the band play the Navy hymn, which is President Bush's favorite song, having the captains of the aircraft carrier in the front row, having um, uh, the, the um, Near My God to Thee just played, I don't know if you guys caught it, uh, that was also played at the beginning of Mrs. Bush's funeral. And so I think that was certainly on purpose. President Bush's fingerprints are all over this. And I think we're going to see more and more of those little touches you know, nods to the Secret Service agents being the honorary pallbearers. The Secret Service agents, he was already beloved. Remember when he shaved his head mm. uh, in honor right. of Patrick? In honor of uh, that cemented him for all time in the Secret Service uh, Hall of Fame. So, <laughs> and, and John King and I can yeah. remember, if you look at Vice President Cheney, it's also the, the multi-layers of history and policy yeah. and war and peace that Dick Cheney, who served as his second choice to be president of 41 uh, after John Tower was not confirmed, to be Secretary of Defense and lead so ably during uh, the Gulf War, only to, in President 41's eyes, serve his son less ably in his advice in the follow-on Gulf War. And now we have George P. Bush, who will be doing one of the eulogies, mm -hmm. and he lives across the street from me in Austin, and he is the family historian. He's been working to save the Alamo to make a multicultural story. He's paid big costs for that in Texas. We're trying to redefine what the Alamo is. But he is the historian of the Bush family. He knows everything that occurred, and I, I, I'm looking forward to his remarks. Too. And, the, and the new generation yeah, right, of the politicians. He, he, is, he, yeah. he is the future. One thing that is so remarkable to me in, in John Meacham's book is the president being so forthcoming about how much it hurt when he lost mm -hmm. and how he felt that he had disappointed people in being a one-term president and um, just talking about what he did wrong, how he could not talk about himself, uh, or even his achievements uh, very well, and how his, uh, he, may, he may have made a mistake with the tax, you know, with the tax hike. Remarkable honesty coming from somebody willing to look inside, have somebody else tell his story, of course, not himself, look inside and say, you know what, I did a lot of stuff wrong, but I also got a lot done uh, in, four, in four short years. And he won a, a Profile and Courage Award for the Read My Lips, No New Taxes. The Democrats <laughs> awarded him for that you know, they, uh, in the, uh, the Kennedy Library. Kennedy Library. Yeah, the yeah, Kennedy Kennedy Library. Library. Yep. And they had to, I'm thinking, you know, President 41 had to sweat out two election nights with his son. 
there in Austin in the governor's mansion, which goes to recount, of course, and even in 2004, wasn't declared that night. And then yeah. wondering if he could do something he hadn't, which is be reelected. And again, we're going to see a lot about the relationship between W and his father, which had its yeah. tensions when, when uh, Bush 43 was president. But when the two of them were no longer president, the portrait that W painted of his father, the book he wrote about his father, the, the bond that they formed when they didn't have all the stress of being president and how to behave with each other on their heads, uh, that relationship in its later years was really... Uh, wonderful to watch. It, it's also interesting to see so many foreign leaders attend this. I mean, there was such an international focus uh, for the presidency of Bush 41. Uh, and you think about, you know, uh, obviously the, the relations this administration is having uh, currently or with leaders around the world. Uh, but Angela Merkel is here, uh, Brian Mulroney from Canada, who's actually going to be giving one of the eulogies. Think about the brinksmanship that we're in the middle of right now, even with Russia over nuclear weapons, something that was a signature achievement of President Bush 41 as a carryover from the detente achieved under President Bush. And here's President Trump and Melania Trump arriving West this night. Donald Trump has not done so. 
Uh, John, stand by. Uh, Jim Acosta, our chief White House correspondent, is there at the National Cathedral as well. You're watching all these amazing pictures, uh, as we all are. Uh, what are you hearing? Yeah, well, if I just wanted to uh, add to what you were just talking about a few moments ago with John King, and that is uh, I talked to a source close to the president, President Trump, uh, earlier this morning who said, uh, yes, uh, the Bush family was very gracious in inviting President Trump, uh, First Lady Melania,